Good day, everyone. The next topic is the internet. So, what is internet? Now, the internet is a global wide area network that connects computer systems worldwide. It consists of several high bandwidth data lines that make up the internet's backbone. Now, these lines connect to major internet hubs which distribute data to other locations like web servers and ISP or internet service provider. So how did the uh, internet started? Here is a brief timeline on the history of the internet. 1960s. Now, 1960s is where the internet began. As a means of government research to share data. Now, computers in the 1960s were large and immobile. And in order to use them or to use information stored in any one computer or any computer, one had to either travel to the computer's location or have magnetic computer tapes sent via the traditional postal system. Now, the ARPANET or Advanced Research Projects Agency Network is the network that gave rise to what we now call the Internet. The ARPANET was a huge success, but membership was restricted to academic and research institutions with contracts with the Defense Department in the United States. As a result, other networks were formed to facilitate information sharing. Now, in 1970s, specifically in 1973, Robert Kahn and Vinton Cerf worked together to create a protocol for, cre uh, for connecting multiple networks. This evolved into the uh, Transmission Control Protocol protocol internet protocol or the tcp ip a technology that connects multiple networks so that if one fails the others do not next is in 1980s now university of delaware's dave farber reveals a project to build a low-cost network using dial-up phone lines the uh, phone net system is established in 1982 and is linked to ARPANET and the first commercial network, Telenet. These broaden internet access and enables email communication between countries all over the world. Now, the internet celebrated its official birthday on January 1, 1983. Prior to this, there was no standard way for computer networks to communicate with one another. Transfer Control Protocol Internet Protocol or TCPIP was created as a new communication protocol. This enabled various types of computer on different networks to talk to one another. 1990s ARPANET is decommissioned in 1990. Tim Berners-Lee and his colleagues at CERN created the Hypertext Markup Language or the HTML and the Uniform Resource Locator or URL which gave birth to the World Wide Web's first incarnation. Two thousand and present. The dot com bubble starts to burst. BitTorrent, Facebook, Amazon, Google, and Apple's iPhone, which released a platform for mobile web use, came to revolutionize internet use. You know, the internet has changed dramatically, and there is every indication that it will continue to change in unpredictably 
or in uh, unpredictable ways. As a result, professionals must stay ahead of the curve in order to maximize their potential in their future careers, or in this case, for your future careers. Now, learning more about the current and future digital landscape in the classroom is one of the best ways to understand it. We now go to the different components of the internet. So what are the components of the internet? So here are five major components. So let's discuss them one by one. The first component is servers. Now a server is a computer, okay, that makes data available to other computers. There are numerous types of servers, including web servers, mail servers, and file servers. Now, each type runs a software that is specific to the server's purpose. Next, we have the IP address as a component of the internet. Now, the IP address is a logical numeric address assigned to each computer or printer or a switch or a router or anything that is connected on the uh, computer system or the network system or other devices okay which is a part of a tcp ip based network now the ip address is the foundation upon which the networking architecture is built so without it no network exists so that is how important an IP address is. Now, an IP address is a logical address used to uniquely identify each node in a network. Think of an IP address as your fingerprint, okay? So that is, uh, or in your case, if you're a student, it can be, it can probably be your, your uh, student number, okay? Which identifies you. Okay, and only you. Next, we have the browser. Now, a browser is a software application that allows you to view the internet or in and interact okay, with all of the information on the World Wide Web. Web pages, videos, and images are all examples of this. Now, prior to the web, the term browser referred to user interfaces that allow you to browse, navigate through, and read text files online. So examples of a browser is, a, is the uh, uh, Google Chrome, uh, uh, Opera Mini, okay, and many more. Next, we have the domain name system or DNS. Now, domain, na domain names are memorable names for websites and other internet services. Computers, on the other hand, connect to the internet via their IP addresses. Now, DNS converts domain names into IP addresses, allowing you to access a website by its domain name. The last component is the Internet Service Provider or the ISP. So I'm sure most of you already know what an ISP is. Now, uh, to give definition to an ISP, so an ISP allows access to the Internet. So every time you connect to the Internet, whether at home or at work, your connection is routed, routed through an ISP. Next on the list are the different uh, uses of the internet. So I have listed here some of the uses. Okay, These are the most common use of the internet now nowadays. Okay, first is the electronic mail. So the first major application of the internet is email. Okay, people flock to uh, email to instantly share information, date, data files, photos, videos, business communications, and other files with others. 
Okay, this enable uh, people to uh, communicate more quickly and improve business efficiency. Now, email has significantly reduced the use of paper and the load on physical mail systems. Next, we have the FTP file transfer. Okay, or what uh, FTP stands for file transfer protocol. Okay, now this was the internet's second most important use case in its early days. Now, FTP or file transfer protocol is a file transfer protocol that allows two stakeholders to securely exchange data over the internet media. Now, data exchange can take place between two business entities or between two customers and businesses. Okay. Now, normally, a, an email limits the size of a file that can be shared. And sharing sensitive and confidential data across the public networks is not secure. Now, even today, the FTP concept is used to mobile apps for file downloading. Next use is the search engines. Okay, So, these are engines find information that one six now which is available on any server around the world or the world wide web now the most well-known search engines in use today are google yahoo and msn okay on this site one can stretch for anything and the search question can be in any format okay so, in fact, people have begun to use the term Google as a generic verb synonym with search. Next, we have the e-commerce. Okay, so the e-commerce. Now, the internet allows for the online sale of goods and services. Now, many e-commerce platform vendors such as the Amazon, the Ula, or in our case here in the Philippines, we have Lazada and Shopee, okay, aggregate various product services available in the market and sell them to customers through their portal. Now, platform vendors procure products, store them in their warehouse, pack them, and distribute them under their own brand. Next, we have the online banking, or we call it as net banking. Now, net banking or online banking allows you to conduct banking transactions from the comforts of your own home or while on the go. Now, footfalls in bank branches have decreased significantly as almost all services are now available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week through net banking. Now, through the servers, any amount of money can be transferred instantly. Electric bills, telephone bills, and other services can be paid using e-banking. Next, we have the uh, cashless transactions. Now, bill payments at merchants via debit cards, credit cards, and UPI gateway is on the rise. Now, cash circulation in the system is reduced in proportion to the growth of these transactions. Now, it is growing at a rate of more than 50% per year and is expected to grow tenfold over the next five years. Next is education. Okay, now with the structured navigation and search capabilities, okay, uh, the internet provides a wealth of educational materials on any subject. Now, any reading material can be sought and the internet will retrieve it from the, any server in any part of the world, eliminating the need for people to visit libraries to read books. Now, this is only one example okay, of, uh, for education. Next, we have collaboration. Okay, online chat tools such as Messenger, Skype, and other video conferencing tools uh, like Zoom or uh, Google Meet, 
Okay? Enables people to stay connected 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for business or personal discussions. Now, this saves people time and allow them to spend it more productively. Okay? The internet has also made it possible to work from home as we, some of you may be experiencing right now while remaining connected to the office and avoiding daily commuting. Next, we have social networking. Okay, now, the internet connects people and allows them to form social groups or any social political issues, information, ideas, point of view, and opinions are exchanged. Now, this platform is used by political and social organizations to promote their case among the general public. And that concludes this topic. Thanks for watching.